So last time we left off by actually getting our game to load the world across the clients. Now what I'm going to be showing you this time is this here where we actually spawn our players, get them to move around, and actually show our player names. So with that said, let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our player, so go ahead and add a new scene. We're going to add a kinematic body 2D. Then we're just going to go ahead and rename this to player. Then as a child of the player, we're going to add a sprite node. As another child, we're going to add a collision polygon 2D. And as another child, we're going to add a label. Lastly, we're going to add a camera 2D as well, and that's pretty much our player setup. Now with our sprite node selected, we're going to go down and select our player.png and drag it into the detector field of our sprite node. Then with our collision polygon 2D selected, we're going to turn on our snapping on and we're going to click on this plus button to start adding the points for our collision. So just go ahead and add points for your collision and you can turn off snap if you want and you can move your points and adjust it to better fit your player and you can hold the shift button to adjust the points across the axis that you're moving it on. Then we're just going to save our player and we're gonna actually save it in a new folder called player. So just go ahead and create a new folder called player in your root folder and save your file there. And we're making sure that we save both the folder and file name with lowercase because we're following go the styling guide. Now with that done, we're actually going to start coding here. We're going to actually set up our script to spawn our players and we're going to do this on the world. So go to your world scene, select your world and add a new script. And instead of naming it world.gd, we're going to name it game state and we're going to make sure it's empty and that we save it in the world folder. Now in this script, we're going to actually start by specifying a content called player is equal to preload and then it's going to be our player scene. Then we want to do a on ready var and, and in this case it's going to be our player spawn. So on ready var player spawn is equal to and actually we're going to name our position 2D to player spawn and back in our script we're going to set our player spawn equal to dollar sign player spawn. Then we're going to set up another on ready var. In this case, it's going to be players is equal to dollar sign players. Then we're going to set up our function ready. And for now, we're actually going to just do pass. Then we're going to start creating a remote function. And in this case, it's going to be called spawn player. And we're going to pass the ID to it. Inside this function, we're going to do var player is equal to player dot instance. Then we want to do player dot name is equal to str and then we're passing ID to it. Then underneath that line, we're doing players dot add child and we're passing player to it. Then we're doing player dot set as network master or dot set network master and we're passing the ID to it. Then we want to do player dot position is equal to player spawn dot position. And that pretty much does it for that function. Now in our ready, we want to do a RPC ID call to the server. So make sure that you specify the server by putting a one as the first parameter and then the function that we want to call. So in this case, it's spawn players and we're going to pass the server dot local player ID to it. Now on our server side, we're going to actually add our game state dot gd script in our world scene as well. So go ahead and create it there. And then we're going to pretty much do almost the same thing. So we're going to do const player is equal to preload and we don't have our player scene actually set up yet. So we're going to create a new scene and we're going to add a node 2d in this case and we're just going to rename it to player. And that's actually all we need for our player scene on the server. So make sure that you save it in a new folder called player and you save the file inside that new folder and make sure it has the exact same name as it does in our client side. Then back in our game state script, we're going to just click and drag our player's scene into the preload. Then we want to do on ready var players is equal to dollar sign players and then remote function spawn players and then passing the ID to it and then var player is equal to player dot instance. So as you can see, it's pretty similar to what we did in the client. So then we're just going to do player.name is equal to str, passing the ID to it. We're doing players.addChild player, 
and then we're doing an RPC back to our clients and it's going to be a RPC calling the spawn player function that we set up on the clients and we're passing the ID to it. And that pretty much does it for our server. So if we run our server and then we run an instance of our client and if I actually go back to my client project here and run that we can actually test it out. So if we just join the game, click ready, click ready, and it does take us to our world, but it's actually not loading our player or spawning our player. So there's an issue in our code somewhere. So let me just check my scenes here. So everything looks properly set up in the world. So it has to be something in our script. So let me see here and um, let's see. Oh, it's because I missed, uh, mistyped here so it should be spawn players I forgot to add the end there so make sure that you actually have proper spelling because Golda actually doesn't give you an error for RPC calls uh, calling a function so make sure you have the proper name and it's not misspelled and there's still an issue when we rerun it so that means that we have another error somewhere <clears throat> so uh, let me actually check my code again and that's actually let's see and that's actually because I forgot to the underscore on my ready function. So don't forget to add the underscore on your ready. So now if we rerun everything, we should actually get our player spawning. So let's see here. So if we join the game and we click ready and look at that, we have our player spawned in, but we don't actually have movement because we don't have the code in place yet so let's go ahead and actually add that code to actually move our player so in order to move our player we're actually gonna go to our player scene and we're gonna add a script to our player so it's just gonna be called player and it's gonna be saved in the player folder and I just pretty much copied and pasted some code from my uh, top-down player controller video that I did so if you want to check out that video where I explain how to do that it's gonna be somewhere up here uh, but if you don't want to check it out then you can just pause your uh, video and then just copy the code so if I just run this locally yeah, as you can see, we can actually move our player around. Now we do want to add some more code for this specific game. So in the apply movement function, add the line look at get global mouse position. And if we run the uh, local scene again, as you can see, our player actually rotates and follows the mouse position. Now we also want to add some more code in our physics process. So in this case, it's going to be an if statement. So if is network master, and we want to actually add all that code there that we had written inside that if statement. Then we want to do an RPC unreliable ID call and make sure that we're calling the server. So specify it with a one and then comma, and then the function we're calling. So update player, and then we're passing the global position or not the global position, the global transform. Then we're going to be setting up a remote function and we're going to call it update remote player. And then we're passing the transform into it inside this function. We're going to do if not is network master. And inside this if statement, we're actually going to do global transform is equal to transform. And that pretty much does it for that code. Now we're just going to set up our code to actually show our player name. So we want to do function set player name and then inside that function, well actually before we do anything we want to set up an unready var player label is equal to dollar sign label. Now back in the set player name function we're going to do player underscore label that text is equal to server dot players and then square brackets int and inside the parentheses name and then square brackets again and then doing player underscore name as the key for it and then up at, at the very top we want to do function ready and then set player name and then we also want to add the line player label dot set as top level and set it equal to true and if you control click it what top level does is basically it enables it so that the node doesn't inherit the transform from the parent 
So you want to make sure that you actually do that because otherwise your la your label and your name will be pretty much rotating with your player and we don't want that. Now in order to actually get this to work how we want it in our physics process if it's network play master if statement we want to add the line player label dot rec position is equal to vector 2 position dot x minus 40 comma position dot y minus 60 and the minus 40 and minus 60 I kind of just pretty much got through trial and error you can try other values if you want and see how it looks on your end but we also want to copy and paste that line in our remote function as well so go ahead and do that and then with our camera 2D selected, make sure that current isn't on, but we do want to make sure that smoothing is on, so go ahead and do that. And we're actually going to set our camera to current inside the code. So we're going to actually select our camera, so we're going to do on ready var camera is equal to dollar sign camera 2D. And then the if is network master, we're going to do camera that current is equal to true. Now we re run this local scene, we can't actually run it anymore, it gives us an error, so don't do that anymore. <laughs> Now over in the server, we want to actually add a script to our player, so go ahead and add a script to the player, make sure it's called player, and it's empty, and you actually save it in the player folder. Then with that script created, we want to set up the remote function that we're uh, calling with the RPC back in our client. So remote function update player, and we're passing the transform to it. Then inside this function, we want to do an RPC unreliable back to our client. So in this case, we're going to be calling the update remote function. Or in this case, it's update remote player, if I remember correctly. So go ahead and do that. And then we're passing the transform back to our clients. And that's pretty much it for our server. Now I'm just checking to see if I named everything the exact same way because uh, as you saw earlier, it, naming does in fact matter, otherwise the code won't actually work. And I actually didn't explain what RPC unreliable and RPC uh, actually do or what the difference is. So basically RPC is basically uh, more secure, it's slower, but it makes sure that all your clients actually receive the call or signal. So in essence, RPC calls make sure that all clients receive the packages without corruption. And then RPC unreliable calls, just like the name implies, are more unreliable, but in turn they are a lot faster. And these are perfect for things such as player movement. And then RPC calls are perfect for things that you want to make sure that the players actually receive. So that's the main difference between these two things. Now, if we run our server, and for whatever reason we're getting an error listening on port error, so make sure you go to editor, editor settings, you want to scroll down until you find the network, and then debug, and then change the remote port to something else so that you don't get that error when you actually run the server. So we get server started now, and then if we run our client project, then we run another instance, we can join the game and then click ready and as you can see both our players actually spawn and we can actually you know rotate our player to follow the mouse position and then we can actually move the camera does actually follow our player around and we can actually move the other player as well and the movement is actually synchronized across clients now i'm just going to change the color of my player so i'm selecting the sprite node going to visibility under canvas item and then changing self modulate to a bluish color for now and uh, if i run everything again and join the game and click ready then my players actually spawn with that blue color now i am gonna actually write some code later on to let you choose the color that you want to use but that's for a future video now there is something to keep in mind though with the solution that i implemented and that is if a player joins or tries to join the game while a game is already in session it will actually cause some errors so uh, you can probably add some code to prevent that such as if statements to handle the function behind that but for this particular solution i have my, i myself haven't uh, come up with a solution for that so do keep that in mind and if you actually come up with a solution let me know in the comments below now 
With that you're done, so the links to the GitHub project and the assets used will be in the description and at the time of the recording we're on our way to 100 subscribers so make sure you leave a like and subscribe and as always I'll see you guys in the next one.